Hey everyone, Ash here. I'm excited to give you guys a little life update because it's been a while. But before I do that, I want to read to you guys the verse that I'm going to be focusing on today because more important than anything I could say in this video or in any video is God's word. God's word is everlasting. It's what's going to last forever. It's what's most important. And literally there's nothing that I could say that could ever compare to him. He is the one who can speak directly to your heart through his word. So today I'm going to be focusing on 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 9. And it says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into the ruin and destruction. Again, the first verse, but godliness with contentment is great gain. <music> Hi guys, I'm Ash. If you're new here, I'm Ashley. I post Christian videos on here every week with my mama bear and with my sister Taylor. And we just love being able to share God's word with you every week. So, um, yeah, I wanted to give you guys a life update because it's been a while. And I've been very, very, very busy, which busy is a word that me and Johnny, my fiance, have been trying to avoid. So I've been very, very bleep busy. Um, so why am I always busy? I always tell you guys I'm busy. I, I need to reflect on my life. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. But I wanted to give you guys a life update and um, just tell you where I've been at what God has been teaching me, all that stuff. So if you see me looking down, it's because I wrote a few notes. I just wanted to give you guys an honest life update because I was at church the other day and I was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking about quiet time struggles. And I was like, I have so many quiet, quiet time struggles. It's unreal. But I'm like thinking, I'm like, why? Like, I feel like people who watch Coffee and Bible Time think, oh, they never struggle in their quiet time. They never struggle with seeking the Lord. And that is not, that is the furthest thing from the truth. And that's actually something I wanted to address today is that recently, because I have been so busy, bleep, because I've been so busy, I feel like I have been definitely going through the motions with my quiet time. And going through the motions, what does that mean? It means just kind of not stopping to really reflect, not stopping to really rest and to dive into God's word and to focus on who God is and also focus on my heart and where I'm at and in light of who God is. So I've been just been going, 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 going. As many of you guys know, I run Coffee and Bible Time, this online business, I'm in school full time. I'm actually taking extra college courses to get done by mid summer. So I'll be done with college by July. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm, I've been running on low steam, you guys. I've been running on low steam. Um, but I do online school. I'm running a business and I'm planning a wedding. So that's super exciting, but it's a lot on my plate and it definitely takes a toll on my time with the Lord because I feel like in the morning I wake up and I'm like immediately like I want to get things done but I have to remind myself like no these mornings are your sacred time these mornings are your time with the Lord to sit at his feet just like Mary sat at his feet while Martha was doing a million things I'm tempted to be like a Martha when Martha wasn't what she was doing wasn't wrong in the right context it is not wrong but I believe when I start my day I want it to be more like Mary who was sitting at his feet and listening 
So struggling with that. And I've also been struggling with just like bad squirrel syndrome in my quiet times, just like bad squirrel syndrome. So I mean, like I, my mind is everywhere else. I'm thinking about a million things to do. My phone distracts me. I'm distracted by my own thoughts. I'm distracted by what's going on in my house or around me or, you know, all those things. And I think a lot of that has to do with my brain and just, I need to learn tricks and tools to overcome how my brain processes things and works through life. Um, so also you guys, I'm looking outside and it's snowing. I'm going to show you this. God, you are so amazing. Like this is beyond beautiful. Wow. Also, it's almost May and it's snowing like this. Thank you, Jesus, for the snow. <laughs> anyway, so my quiet times have been hard in that sense where I just get badly distracted. So that's why I try to put my phone away. And I, I'm still working to overcome my squirrel-ishness. So one thing to let you guys know is that my grandma has ADHD my mom has ADHD. I'm pretty sure my brother has it. And so I may have it. So I've never gotten actually tested for it. So that could be a reason why I'm constantly crazy out of it. Um, but I don't know if you guys have any tools for help for people with squirrel brain, please let me know in the description. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to go on here and let you guys know that. And to let you know that I think we're always going to have struggles in our quiet times and that's okay. But I think the key to all of this is consistency. And what I mean by that is that even on the days you don't want to, even on the days you have squirrel brain, even when it feels like an uphill battle to climb, to do your quiet time, to spend time with the Lord, I believe that it's important to be consistent. So even if you can only do five minutes that morning or you can do 10 minutes and you can read and you can think about it and then you go on with your day, I think that's beautiful and that's amazing. Maybe you could only do three minutes. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Push yourself. Don't just stay where you're at. Push yourself. But I think that consistency is huge because over a long period of time, after years and years and years of seeking the Lord, you will grow closer to him. You will know him better. You will be able to know yourself better in light of him and knowing him in, in his word. So I want you to remember this as you're like, I don't want to do my quiet time today. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling like I just can't do it. Consistency. Remember that. Consistency will add up. You'll look back and you'll have a habit of spending time with the Lord. And one day, 20, 30, 40 years down the line, you will know scripture. Your heart will have scripture stored in it. You will know the Lord. You will continue to know him. You will be able to teach the Lord to other people. You will be confident and firm and grounded on who God is and what his truth says. That's what reading the word does. It connects us to our father. And so let consistency be a word that reminds you to just do it. This has been really helping me in my quiet times on the days where I'm like, I can't do a full Bible study on the days where I'm struggling bad. I will pull this out and I will let my brain go through this. It's like a literally a train track for my brain to stay on God's word, to stay focused on God's word. I have a video of this memorizing scripture. I'll have it linked in the description. But what I really wanted to talk to you guys today also was, and I hope you're watching this far, but was also something that God has been teaching me about contentment. And I've noticed that I am a very, 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 very discontent person. And I think that that, that can be a lot of us. It's hard to be content. And I mean discontent in a lot of areas of my life. Like not just one area, but I've noticed that coming up in a bunch of areas one of those being my body being discontent many times about my body that's a struggle I've been working through for years um that's why I walked through an eating disorder was because of discontentment with my body um discontentment in the area of the things I have discontentment 
literally in any area of my life with my grades or with my schoolwork or with, like I said, it comes up in so many areas. And this is why I really feel like the Lord has been speaking to me lately. Like this phrase, this is what the Lord has given you. Rejoice and be glad in it. And I kind of got that from Psalm 118, 24, which says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So my other phrase is, this is what the Lord has given you. Rejoice and be glad in it. And so I've been thinking about that every day. Like, for example, with my body, if I'm discontent with my body or the way it looks or um, something that I feel like God didn't make right, I'll remind myself of God saying, this is what I have given you. I have given you your body. Rejoice and be glad in it. That's what he has given me, right? When you, when someone gives you a birthday gift, let's say your, your mom or your dad gives you a birthday gift. You usually receive that with open arms and usually you rejoice and you're glad in the birthday gift, right? Especially because if they're a good parent, they're getting you, giving you a good thing, right? And God is our heavenly father. He's so good and he gives us good things. So it's just a good phrase to remember. This is what the Lord has given you. Rejoice and be glad in it. With anything in your life, think about it. With your body, with your home, with your children, with your parents, with any, literally anything, your money, your excuse me, your things, your stuff. Johnny's calling me right now. Hello? Hello, Bacha. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ashley. Thank you. Sorry about that. I don't know where I was and I lost my train of thought. Um. So anyways, God has really been teaching me about contentment because I've been just becoming more self-aware of how badly discontent I am. And... I think that discontentment, what it really shows at the end of the day, it, it reveals our disbelief in God's goodness. So discontentment reveals our disbelief in God's goodness. And I think about the Israelites when they were rescued out from slavery, when God did all these amazing, 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 amazing things to rescue them, right? Like they were stuck in slavery and God brought them out miraculously all these plagues on Egypt, and then they finally were able to go. They crossed the Red Sea. Okay, I'm drinking this kombucha, so I'm a little, you know, burpy. But anyways, God opened the Red Sea, and they went through the Red Sea, and he provided food for them in the desert, and he was providing a promised land for them. I remember the story about how Caleb and Joshua, with a bunch of other men, went into the promised land to go, like, look it out to see what it was like. And most of the men came back and were like, we're not going over there. Like, this is horrible. Like, we're going back to Egypt where we were in slavery. But Caleb and Joshua were like, no, like, this is what God has for us. Like, we're going and the Lord has blessed us with this. And pretty much they believed in God's goodness. They believed in God's promises for them. They were content with God, what God had for them, even though it looked scary, even though it wasn't everything they thought it was going to be, even though there were a lot of bumps and obstacles that they knew they would have to go to to get to the promised land. Caleb and Joshua believed in God's good, goodness, believed in God's blessings, believed in God's promises, believed in God at the end of the day. Um, so I'm just thinking, I'm like, Lord, there's so many times where I'm like the Israelites when they weren't content when they weren't content with the food that you had given them, when they weren't content with the land you had given them, when they weren't content with being rescued out of slavery. I'm like, Lord, I'm sorry. And I think what needed to happen, what needs to happen in my heart is just repentance of like, Lord, I repent. And I confess that I, a lot of times I'm walking in disbelief, especially when I'm discontent especially that's like the warning sign of like you're not trusting in God's goodness you're not believing how awesome he is how good he is and how much of a good father he is so anyways this verse is fire it says but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into the world and we can ta cannot take anything out of this world 
But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Remember my saying, you guys, this is what the Lord has given me. I will rejoice and be glad in it. What has the Lord given you? Maybe it's your body. Maybe it's your story. Maybe it's your home. Maybe it's your money. Maybe it's your job. Maybe, I don't know what it is that you're discontent in right now. But I would love it if you could say with me right now, this is what the Lord has given me. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Repeat it with me, you guys. This is what the Lord has given me. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So I think that's what I wanted to share with you guys with life updates. Just been wedding planning, finishing school, doing all that jazz. And yeah, so I think that that is all I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope this video was encouraging. I hope it showed you that we all have our struggles. We all have our up and ups and downs. We all have our things that pretty much sin, discontentment, disbelief that we need to address, that we need to pinpoint, that we need to repent of. We need to be reminded of God's word and we need to turn back to the Lord. It's an everyday thing, people. Every single day. I have to do this every day. I'm not exempt from that. I need to repent. I need to seek the Lord. I need to remind myself of truth every single day or else I will be persuaded into following the world's ways and if being discontent into thinking I don't have enough into thinking that I need to look a certain way or be a certain way or have a certain thing in order to be fulfilled. No, godliness with contentment is great gain. I love you so much, guys. I'm going to close it out here. I've been ranting so much. I love you. If you guys want to see more like life life updates on school, on wedding planning, on things with Johnny, like how we've been in our relationship, if we've been fighting, I'll give you the scoop all night. This Friday, I'm coming out with a new vlog on Coffee Girls. We come out with a vlog every single Friday on our vlog channel. Go check it out. So yeah, love you guys and I'll see you soon.